in, um, in, in referencing our, our, our recipients of the, the, the first phase of our awards this evening, and uh, it reminds me, in running into Tony O'Reilly over here, the, the night we honoured his father when he quoted uh, his uh, favourite business guru, and uh, most would expect him to say Drucker or somebody as highfalutin as that, but he referenced that it was Groucho Marx. I said Groucho Marx once said that uh, business success is all about honesty and integrity, and if you can fake that, you've really made it. So there's obviously a lot of fakers in the room this evening. Uh, congratulations to all the recipients. Now, can I move on to a very, very special award as we move to the Global Irish uh, and our outstanding achievement in business on an international stage. This year's recipient, Sir Terry Leahy, was appointed Chief Executive of Tesco PLC in March 1997 and retired from his position in March 2011. He received a knighthood for his services to food retailing in 2002 in the New Year's Honours List. Born to Irish immigrant parents, he was educated at St. Edward's College, Liverpool, and then went on to the University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology, where he gained his BSc Honours in Management Science. Terry joined Tesco in 1979 as a marketing executive, if you don't mind me saying, Terry, having been turned down previously for a number of jobs at Tesco. He was promoted to marketing manager in 1981, and from 1984 to 1986, he held the position of marketing director for Tesco Stores Limited. He was appointed commercial director of Fresh Foods in 1986, and appointed to the board of Tesco PLC as marketing director in 1992, and was then appointed deputy managing director in February 95, and then chief executive in 1997. Thereafter, and for a decade, Tesco, under Sir Terry's leadership, was the undisputed star of British business. Terry and his team went from number two in the UK to number two retailer on a global stage. In 1997, Tesco had 17 billion pounds sterling in annual sales, and 10 years later, 70 billion pounds sterling, recording, recording over two billion pounds in profits in 2005. In March 2008, he was nominated by the Retail Week as the Retail Leader of the Year. From 2005 to 2010, he was voted as Britain's most admired leader by management today, and in 2004, he was named as European Businessman of the Year by Fortune magazine. In 2010, he received the Daily Telegraph Award for a Decade of Excellence in Business and a Lifetime Achievement Award from Director magazine, and was, and was voted Business Person of the Year by the Sunday Times. But not content to go to the golf course just yet, Sir Terry is today involved and investing in a range of international businesses, a champion of Liverpool Enterprise, a senior advisor to Clay Clayton Dublier and Rice, the US private equity firm, and chair of B&M Retail, one of Britain's fastest growing discount retailers with nearly 20,000 staff, which is rumored to be considering a float in London. So is he about to do it all over again? Terry, he's not a simple man. He is fiercely intelligent. Interesting, challenging, fascinating. Very calm, he's very quiet, but he has behind it all steely determination. You know what you get with Terry Lee. Liverpool Irish boy, not in any way a privileged background. Uh, went to university up there and joined Tesco. And I think from the moment he got there, people saw he had a lot of potential. The amazing thing that Terry did at that era was he bought fast-moving consumer goods marketing, Unilever, Mars, Coke-style marketing, into retail. And nobody had really done that before. And the thing that was amazing about Terry is he'd never done it either. I think the board then decided that this fella could be a very exciting person to run the company. You know, Terry is an innovator. Chilled fresh foods, taking the business into services, banking, online. Club card is, I think, his favorite uh, example of the probably the biggest achievement. So all those things together meant that Tesco, you know, went from being a just about market leader to a very dominant force. At that point, we, were, we moved into Ireland. The reaction to it in the market was seismic. At the time, you know, 
the sense that people had was uh, that, that this is not going to be good news for Ireland and won't be good news for the Irish economy and in particular the Irish food industry. And I remember Terry saying he couldn't get over the, the, the sense of, of the patriotism perhaps there was that a, a non-Irish company had difficulty with. They carried an advertisement in a magazine in Wales saying we only buy British beef. And of course, once the Irish Girls Street saw this, they took a big ad in the paper just to embarrass Tesco. But Terry always had a smile on his face and he was well able to handle any of that. Within a matter of 12 weeks of, of uh, Tesco's acquisition of the business, Dunn Stores launched their value card. Now, of course, Tesco were the pioneers in developing their own club card. So I think that's probably the clearest indication I could give you of the impact that others in the market felt um, that Tesco's arrival would have. Terry handled the Irish government very well. He reached agreements with them. We delivered on those agreements. I think generally it was a win-win for everybody involved. My reflection on Terry as an individual is that he's a man without ego. And the one thing that impressed me about Terry Lee was that he was a great listener. Now, not just a listener to his colleagues, not just a listener to his competitors, but a listener to his customers. Possibly um, one of his greatest attributes and one of the reasons why I felt I was always going to be able to work well with him it wasn't so much his Irish roots, but it was, in fact, his great support for Everton. One of the reasons why I think I enjoyed working for him was although he was consistent and honest and truthful and loyal and, you know, all those good things, you were never quite sure whether he was going to zig or zag. And suddenly the whole business would be zagging and Terry would zig. And you'd sit back and you'd think, that's why I work for this guy. Terry transformed that, the business, which was very strong and very promising, into a world-class business um, because he, he is a world-class leader. Honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, well, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, it, it's been a, a real privilege to be invited here this evening. It's been a wonderful occasion uh, to attend, um, uh, and I'm very honoured to have received uh, this award, uh, particularly um, as it's gone to so many illustrious uh, Irish business leaders in in the past. Indeed, I didn't know how long to uh, speak. Uh, uh, on this award, so uh, I phoned uh, a past winner, Neville Isdall, uh, and asked him how long. And he said, oh, don't go more than 40 minutes. You want them, you want them hanging on for more. Um, well, uh, as has been said, it, it has a special significance for me. My, my parents are, are Irish. I, I was... Uh, educated in a school in Liverpool that was created actually to educate Irish children who'd come to Liverpool after the famine uh, in the 1840s. Um, and indeed, sitting next to uh, Senator Mitchell this evening um, and, and hearing, of course, of his enormous contribution, I was reminded that it was actually the peace process uh, that, that caused the investment by Tesco into Ireland. Uh, John Major asked me over, I was a young uh, executive then, to accompany him on an investment trip uh, originally into the north. Uh, and it was that commitment to invest then that led on to uh, the purchase of uh, Quinsworth uh, and Stewart supermarkets uh, that started us uh, here in, in Ireland, in, uh, completed in, in 1997. And of course, we were privileged, I was privileged, to witness the remarkable uh, transformation uh, in Ireland uh, over that period from 1995, 6 through to 2008. Uh, and uh, as was said by Morris uh, on the film, um, the early years, Tesco was on probation. Uh, we needed to prove ourselves in Ireland that uh, not only were we good for uh, customers, but we were good for citizens, good for Ireland. 
Uh, and I think that we were able to do that uh, in the end. And I think, too, that Tesco played its part uh, in that change for the good in Ireland between 95, 2008. And of course, I've seen too the, 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 the challenges uh, with the financial crisis and the recession. Um, uh, and, and we had to face that challenge also uh, and change our cost base uh, and cope with a consumer under pressure. And so we witnessed and felt at first hand some of the difficulties that business in Ireland uh, was, was facing. Um, but I could see there was a tremendous cohesion in Ireland, that you were in this together, you were going to get through it uh, together. Uh, and that's really been most impressive and I think has played a, a huge part in bringing you to where you are today. And uh, I came in today, I participated in a, in a retail seminar earlier today, uh, and, and I could begin to sense uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. And, um, uh, you know, the UK um, this year has gone from gloom to, to optimism, almost with no gap in between. It's happened in just a month or two. And I feel the same can happen in Ireland. I, th I think that 2014 could be uh, a tremendous turning point uh, for Ireland, helped in part, of course, by the recovery in the UK, who remains uh, a great uh, trading partner to this country. Uh, and you're very well placed, I think, uh, to benefit from the upturn in the UK uh, and in the global economy. Um, you're still a great leader in education, as John said earlier, agriculture matters more now to the global economy than ever before, and you're a leader uh, there. Uh, and of course, you're a base for internationally competitive businesses, and we've seen some honored here this evening. So may I close by congratulating uh, all of the other winners this evening, uh, a tremendous uh, range of achievements. Uh, and on behalf of all of the staff, in Tesco Ireland and Tesco around the world, who really uh, earned this award, and may I thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, Terry Leahy. Can I also just, uh, in the following of that, also welcome, there's a big team here from Tesco somewhere in the room, and I just want to welcome you all uh, and thank you indeed for your continued investment uh, and the great work you have done. And I mean, retail, we recognize Arthur Ryan is here with us. Um, and who would forget that speech, Arthur? But, uh, you know, we, we all know the challenge in that sector. Um, so many congratulations to, to all of you.